on the doorstep and pounding the pavements to tackle another health crisis. Those working in addiction knew a rapid response was required to reach a largely hidden population at greater risk of relapse or overdose. Hi. Lockdown restrictions saw face-to-face -face services stop overnight. Other support switched to phone and video calls. For people like Darren from Dundee, a lifeline was taken away. No he not support. I just sort of like um, the depression hit a real time more and I just ended up using, going back back way crap and in volume. Which are really dangerous. So you see they care you're getting on them so it's great. It's like you're decent uh decent be deaf every time you talk to them, yeah. Yeah, I had a small relapse but I got out of that luckily enough. And some others don't, eh? We have three new people. For today they're all red really high risk. The people on their list have survived a drug overdose. This team from the Edinburgh charity Change Grow Live is one of several groups in our major cities working with the NHS and police to identify those at risk. Two needles and a syringe are ready full with the medicine and it's always safe to use. During the first wave they also delivered methadone prescriptions and gave out naloxone kits to reverse the effects of an overdose. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. In Dundee, this form of outreach work didn't exist before the pandemic. These changes will now shape its future services. A lot of occasions we would come out and people would be so grateful. We would be saying, oh, we didn't expect someone would come. We didn't think that anybody would actually care. Someone might have been discharged from hospital at six in the morning. We could potentially be at their house by two o'clock in the afternoon. It was a very, very rapid response. Not rapid enough, say campaigners, who claim decades of underfunding have led to a rocketing crisis. In Glasgow during the first wave, rough sleepers were given accommodation in hotels, but support workers remain vigilant. Drugs such as street valium are rife. The Simon community and Turning Point operate the city's new overdose prevention team. One of the first initial referrals we had in a male who had, had over 106 hospital presentations was linked in with services, I think it had two near, near fatal overdoses on that day. We got the referral, you know, I think we're a, a long way off to kind of reversing the kind of number of, kind of drug related deaths in the country. So, you know, we just want to be part of the solution. Families often bear the brunt of this despair. For many, the pandemic is piling on the pressure. I've never seen so many families in the time that I've been involved with family support and such desperation. And most areas, they don't know where to turn to. The isolation and the desperation that's happening, and I'm hearing that for all the families, and their drug habit is 10 times worse than it was before COVID. Well, I put my mum through an awful lot, and she still stuck by me. Stephen Scott understands this chaos. He lived it. He's now a recovery champion, using his experience to help others. I've overdosed three times in my life and, and every time I end up in hospital, uh, literally clinically dead, I think, uh, mm, through different substances, uh, heroin once, and ben mixture benzos and other drugs other times. So it was either change or die every time. Knowing the impact the pandemic was having on mental health, these weekly fitness sessions began in Dundee again as soon as restrictions allowed. The support I get is just pure amazing. Yeah. It's, I can ask for a better support network around this. Eh? This has changed my life around, eh? it definitely has. I'd be totally lost without all these guys. They're about keeping me going. Too many in the grip of addiction go without this level of support, a situation that will once again be under the spotlight with tomorrow's overdue statistics. Sharon Frew, STV News.